Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it is October 2024. I'm Steve Carver. And tonight we're going to talk about that big question that everyone in business has to ask ourselves. How in the world can I find customers? And it's amazing how easy the answer is, is we help them find you. So that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight as we move forward. And by doing that, we're going to plan to bring in a lot of customers to help make our new business sustainable. I'm Steve Carver sharing with you from Dunn, North Carolina, presentation number 1137. And uh, we do have with us tonight a, a great entrepreneurs as well as Shania Robinson, the assistant small business center director at uh, Nash Community College, which is sponsoring our event tonight. I'm not a lawyer or a CPA, just a fellow that's been in business for a long time and still in business. I had a real busy day today, talked with people all over the nation, uh, sent out three or four uh, uh, quotations and actually got an order today, so I was very happy to do that. My advice to you always is get a second opinion before you make an important decision and a good place to find those Good supporting counseling and second opinions is at your small business center. The one at Nash Community College is sponsoring our program tonight. There, Ruthie Holloman is our director and a great one she is. Does all she can to help folks. And Shania Robinson, who's with us uh, online tonight, she'll help you get an appointment set up and do anything she can to help you move your business forward. You can give her a call at 252 Four five one eighty three forty four, uh, and go from there. Hopefully, get an appointment and uh, see how it's going. If you're not in the Rocky Mount area, uh, don't hesitate to let me know and uh, just send me an email or a note or write it in chat, and I'll help you get in touch with the small business center in your area, and they'll be glad to help you as well. Uh, you'll be getting a survey, and if you do, when these surveys come in by email, please fill them out. They're very important uh, to the Small Business Center to plan for future webinars and programs, and also to check up on me. Uh, let them know how you like uh, uh, what I'm doing for you. And, of course, I want you to write down it's the best webinar you've ever been to because that's for my job security. But, indeed, just tell it like it is. The truth will set us all free and uh, tell them what they need to know, that would be good. Reminded you that next Tuesday night, we're going to move away from marketing and reaching out for customers and that kind of stuff and move into more of the organizational uh, business type skills. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, finding funds for our business, uh, how to have fundraising, uh, how to cash flow your business, and information about loan documents. So that's, that's on the plan for next week. So this week uh, we're talking about uh, uh, marketing and how to find customers. Your handouts and study guides that have been emailed to you are very uh, comprehensive this time. Again, your uh, handout number 1137 is the talking points for this uh, for this uh, meeting tonight. And there's some other real good information in there which we'll touch on as we go through tonight. I want us all to remember that we are made for doing so much more. We don't need to be selling ourselves short. Uh, I'm, I can do more than I'm doing. I know that. I just need to keep my priorities in line. So please don't give up on me. And I'll promise you this, I won't give up on you. I've seen what great work that y'all are up to and, and getting started doing and just uh, treasure so much the relationships and learning that we can have together. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll be laying out, as always, a lot tonight. Uh, Take up what uh, what you can. Uh, come back and revisit the uh, video that I'll send to you and your study guides. Uh, make your notes and use what you can to help you move your business forward. I do appreciate your regular attendance. I'm keeping up with it and uh, so that we can get your certificates in place when it's time. And I am happy to mention to uh, Tamara that you uh, because of your previous visits, you got two credits uh, in your column from my uh, visits that you made during the last uh, class, so that if you do happen to miss one of those, we got two credits there to help you along. And uh, I, uh, so I try to help everybody get all the certificates that you can. Uh, let's talk about Hope, who was with us last week. She is a, a, a counselor, uh, uh, helps people with uh, lots of different 
issues over in Murphy. Our prayers go to her for that whole area. Murphy got hit hard with the uh, the rains and the floods and now out of power and cell service. So I haven't heard from Hope. I've sent her an email, but I didn't hear back from her. So I don't even know if she has a uh, service. But if I do hear something, I'll share it with you. But uh, she's a, a great lady, does great work. Sarah, thank you very much for uh, the information that you're sending, and we're really looking forward to watching you grow with your uh, Google uh, business profile and work and uh, and training and uh, and the other work that you're doing as well. Uh, congratulations on your award that the Small Business Center sent out to you. That's a good thing. I'm proud of you, and I uh, look forward to hearing more about your surf pro work if you'd like to share that. Uh, Truck and Whitakers, uh, uh, hopefully will be back with us tonight or, or on Thursday. So proud of her with her spring flowers. Uh, Dr. Thomas, uh, uh, Tamara, thank you for what you're doing and, and uh, working and uh, uh, saving souls and helping people have better days. So thank you so much. And also the violin music that you share. I think we all need to take a special moment for David tonight. He lives in Weaverville, and I saw a report on YouTube today, a, a video that showed that the downtown area of Weaverville really got hit hard with flooding. And he told us last week that his office is right by the courthouse downtown. I tried to call him today and send him some messages, and I got a feeling they're not getting any, any messages. So our prayers go out to David and his family and his neighbors, and hopefully next week we'll get more information and see if there's any way that we can help them. But uh, this, this issue in the mountains is really touching real close to me. I've got a daughter that lives in Waynesville area, and they lived on the top of a mountain, uh, so they didn't get flooded out, but they didn't have any uh, electrical service or power or water for several days. So it's, it's touching a lot of people real seriously. Miko, thank you for sharing with us and your good work and your great smile. I hope your business is up and running. And Tasha, same for you with your uh, nonprofit center. Uh, Robbie is probably uh, very busy with his uh, hardware and other businesses helping people. Uh, recover from the storm down in Bladen County. Uh, Keisha uh, keeps sending me good information, and we appreciate all that she's doing helping to get her excursion uh, events business up and running. And uh, she had sent me a uh, her uh, her menu of services being provided and getting started on her business plan. So very proud of her for what she's doing as well. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, join over at the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates on Facebook. You just might see your face up there, and I certainly do appreciate your uh, your work in there as well. My job's to be assertive. Our word from last week and to motivate. I'll do as best I can for you on that, and we'll keep on trucking along. So moving right into the review and uh, working on our drill skills, we're up to number 25 tonight, and uh, we'll go through these at, uh, each, each time. Our new drill skills are, one, nonverbal communications are very, very important. We're all mature. You already know that. Maybe you've uh, if, if, if observed it in things that you've done through the years. But now as you're moving into entrepreneurship, I want to ring your bell that lots of times you learn a whole lot more from what people do not say than what they actually say. You can get a good read on uh, how they're feeling about things by watching their body language, uh, their, their, uh, the things that they do and the way they point their body or or, uh, or rub their eyes or their head or look at you sometimes even the way they blink their eyes. Uh, become more astute. Have more mindfulness on nonverbal communications. It can make a world of difference. And when you're talking on the phone with people, Learn really to listen better. Sometimes when you ask that question and you sense the pauses that people have or the expressions or hear the tones or the grunts or the moans that they might offer, you can get a lot of information. But you know what you have to do? you got to really have your radar turned on and listen. That's one of the biggest uh, problems that I have and everyone else has is, is, uh, is learning to listen better. Uh, to when we're talking with people. If you're working on a relationship, listening is important. Uh, you you have to 
guard against talking over someone. Maybe when someone is talking and they take a breath or have a little pause, a lot of folks that are full of energy would just start talking and not let someone finish the sentence or their thought. That is disturbing for some people and actually makes some people angry in that they don't feel like they're getting the respect that they need. So the way you give and take nonverbal communications is really important as well. Who is it that motivates other people? You have to remember this. Who motivates other people? You're going to find yourself wishing someone would go ahead and do something. You know? Wishing and hoping that things would take a different path. Well, as an entrepreneur, it's time now that you know that you being assertive makes things happen that way. We make our own luck lots of times. It's just not a, a chance that things fall one way or the other, but we indeed make our own luck. And sometimes it has everything to do with being assertive. Got to be careful not to be pushy. Got to be careful not to be a bully or to come across as a know-it-all or overconfident. But also know how important it is to have the willpower and the projection to be assertive enough to motivate uh, uh, the situation to end up at the goal that you need it for for your business. It's not going to happen by itself. You have to take the action. Uh, we're, we're now moving into the generally the tax season, as, as uh, Cindy's already mentioned. There's two words that I want you to be kind of thinking about before we get to week six, and that is the two words are tax avoidance and tax evasion. And I'm here to tell you, as someone who's been in business a long time and a business coach, I want you to be real good at tax avoidance. That is a good thing. And being able to avoid the taxes you don't have to pay is the difference many times in whether or not you end up with any profit or not and are able to stay in business. So tax avoidance is a good thing. And we'll talk about in in uh, in week six, different ways that that might play with you and, and to help your business. But tax evasion is a different situation. That's when you're lying, cheating, and stealing. And by golly, that is against the law, and it can cost you a lot of money and a lot of time, and maybe your business as well. And even if you're serious enough, you can go to jail with it. So tax avoidance is a good thing. Tax evasion is a bad thing. We do want to avoid paying any taxes that we don't have to, and we don't want to take it to a point where we're doing tax evasion that will get you into trouble and cost you a lot of money. We need to remember that we don't get knocked down a lot. Uh, like I was mentioning right now, I, I, I have some friends in the mountains, uh, many friends in the academy that have been with us through the years, uh, who right now I know they're feeling like they're being knocked down. And, and uh, it's tough enough just to try to make a business work. You get knocked down enough with that. But then when other things come along, like a weather disaster like this, it really can turn everything upside down. Like COVID did, just knock down so many entrepreneurs and so many churches, so many other organizations. But we have to have the resilience to get back up. We have to have the resilience to get back up and keep on going. Because like we talked about last week, customers are going to have to hear you nine times before they're going to do any business with you. That means you got a good chance of them saying no nine times before they say yes. Well, we can't, we can't give up. We just have to know that's the environment that we live in. We're ready for it. We're tough enough for it. And we're going to keep getting up to make our businesses sustainable. So it, it really doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. What counts is your determination to get back up with a smile on your face and ask for that order again. Staying in the race. Staying in the race is the way we win this race. What's your legacy going to be as an entrepreneur, as a business person? Is it going to be that as a, of a taker or a giver? And in the 65 years I've been in business, I've seen lots of both. I've probably seen more takers than I have givers. But I have seen a gracious number of givers make it a long time 
while most of the people who were takers <laughs> were in it for the short term. What do I mean by taker givers? I mean, are you up in the morning running your business with the attitude, I'm here to help people, I'm here to see what I can do for them, to see what I can share with them, to see how I can help them have a better day and a better life? Or is your attitude that of a narcissist, I'm just concerned with myself and my own business, and I'm all about making the moves to help old Steve-O here. I don't want to be that. I, 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 I try hard not to be that. Because when you're in here to help folks and you're a giver, you, you draw strength. You get wonderful gratification from the fact that you are helping lift people up. So I, I don't want to uh, get too mushy here about this, but it is real. Because when you're out here lifting people up, you're creating good relationships of people that will keep coming back with you to do business. And that is also important. But if you're here trying to cut every deal to make every penny of profit that you can uh, while you're maybe uh, uh, taking advantage of someone else, you're not going to make it long. That, that word will get out, and it'll come back to hurt you. Yes, we are all about making a good profit, and I am all about that. But I am not about taking advantage of people or situations that end up not being win-win propositions. So our goal, our legacy, be a giver, okay? <clears throat> when you're being the best person you can be, you're going to be the best business person you can be. And I like to, to, to use the, the candle as an example. Let your light shine. As you're out here moving around in the business world, in the community, in and out with people, be a light. Hold up that light. Let your candle shine to give light, to help people see the way, offer warmth. That's the analogy I like to use. Let your light shine, and by golly, it'll help you move in the right directions. Last week, we talked about the magic marketing moment. Remember that? That's, that was the whole goal of the Golden Goose marketing campaign, to have that magic marketing moment when you can follow up with your customer, assure them that you were after their 100% satisfaction, and then you're able to ask them, what are they going to buy next? What services do you need to add? What products do you need to add? How can you be a better counselor for them? Talking to these customers is the way that we know what's going to happen next if we're, if we're smart. Because we're going to take this information and plug it in to our, our, our marketing foundation, our marketing plan. And, and we get this information from customers as we talk to them and convince them that you are all about their 100% satisfaction. That's the magic marketing moment. And a marketing campaign program plan that gives you this opportunity is a plan that helps you stay in business. It's not complicated, as we talked about last week. It's doing one thing after another, just like the plan tells us to do, all the way around to where we uh, talk about the 100% uh, customer satisfaction, and then getting the information we need to do our planning for the future and to get the contact information from that customer into our database so we can stay in touch with them. Now, y'all all received about 12 emails from me today if they went through and didn't go to your spam file. 12 emails. And I sent those out in less than 15 minutes. I did that by having my, my emails ready to go, having a good database, using the email address. It's very easy. It didn't cost me a penny to send that information to you guys. When you can get your customer database in a situation where you can do mass emailing out to your Raven fan customers, then you're going to see the results of, of, of just how effective that will be about bringing stuff to you. Now, those samples I sent to you are just that. Just look at them, 
see if there's anything in there you can use, any ideas or ways that I do my business, since a lot of those stuff that I, I use in my business as examples of maybe things that you can do to help your business. And I'm glad to share that with you. Videos, videos, and videos. And adding those to your web pages and your presentations are fundamental in moving your business forward and indeed jump starting your sales. That's you I've heard you've heard me say this so many times. We'll say it more tonight and it's still the truth. Okay, let's go to some chat questions now. Get your get your hot fingers warmed up and we're gonna talk about a few things here. Ready? So the, the question is the three times rule we talked about last week said that we need to take out whatever, if we're new, take our cost of something and multiply it times three. And when we do, we'll have one-third of the money that comes in to cover our initial cost. We'll have another third of our money to cover our overhead, our operating cost. But what is that last third of the money for? What's the third of the money that's left over? What is it good for? It's good to do what? To put for us to, to have some money for what? Anybody got an idea? One word starts with P, the other word starts with T. What are we going what are we gonna do with that last third of our money? Mm -hmm. Don't see anybody jumping on it, so maybe I didn't do a good job teaching that last week. Well that's kinda of, kinda of right, Cindy, but the words I'm looking for the last third is for profit and taxes. We gotta remember that when we're building a price on a, on, for a service or a product. We want to cover our cost. We want to cover our overhead, our business cost. And we want to end up with some profit. And when we have profit, we don't have to pay some taxes. So just keep that in mind as, as, a, as what, what we're doing as we're setting prices. The 27 times rule basically said that a customer is going to need to see our, our information and, and, and uh, presentations, business cards, such as that, how many times before they uh, do some real good business with us? How many times? Seven, no, no, nine. That's exactly right. You got that right, uh, Tamara. People are going to have to know you're alive and well and still here about nine times before they don't do any serious business with you. And they're going to miss your ads. They're going to miss my ads about how, how often. Yes, two out of three times. That's right. So if we know that uh, they're going to miss our ads two out of three times and they need to see them nine times, how many times do we need to think about it for our rule? And the answer is 27. Three times nine is 27. Remember, we put that chart up to show you how that works. So that's just something for you to think about. It's a good plan. It saves you a lot of money. So tonight we're going to be talking about how to find customers, and an important way we're going to do that is using SEO. SEO. What does that stand for? SEO. It is the way we, that we talk about the content that's on web pages. What does SEO stand for? Do you know yet? Well, after tonight, I definitely want you to know. Let's see, Sarah's got it in there. Yes, search engine optimization. Search engine optimization, SEO. Man, it took me a long time to really want to get into that, and I really don't need to get into it too deep other than what we talk about tonight. But it is a big deal. Remember last week when I showed you how I got to the first 18 positions on a, on a Google web page search? SEO is what it's all about. What, how we, the information we feed into our web pages is how the search engines find us and decide that our page will better serve this customer than all our competitors out there. So SEO is a big, big thing, and we're going to focus on it tonight. Okay, words of the week. We're in week four tonight. Week one started with the letter S, week two with the letter M, and week three with the letter A. Do you all remember those three words? Uh, let's see, Tamara's got down the first one. Hmm, the third word was assertiveness. That's good. How about number two? What starts with DM? Mindfulness. Y'all agree with that? Let's see someone else type of man. How about that? Yep. These words of the week are kind of fun. I enjoy using them through the week, and I hope that y'all do as well. So the words of the week are shrewd, 
mindfulness and assertiveness, shrewd, being savvy, being intelligent, mindfulness, having our radar turned on and being focused and, and percepting uh, what's going on around us. Assertiveness is have the self-awareness and aggressiveness to help motivate others and to be willing to do it. Having that willingness to do it, and that is so important. I've already mentioned it tonight. I want you to be assertive when you need to be. The word tonight is one of my favorites. So powerful words. Uh, this was used in a in a sermon uh, last, not this past summer, but summer before last, by a preacher over in Elizabeth Town, Jason Williams. He gave a, a really good sermon on endurance, and it wrote home with me about how much important it is to my personal faith, but. It was so easy to apply with business teachings as well. Endurance is a good word. That's the ability to withstand hardship and adversity. And man, do our friends in the mountains need endurance now. They are facing the fact. Uh, and, and to be able to sustain a prolonged stressful period. Um, last, not this spring, but spring before last, our, our uh, uh, number one uh, student in our, in, in our class uh, was Vanessa McIntosh, who lives in Burnsville, North Carolina. That's deep in the mountains of North Carolina. And I exchanged uh, text messages with Vanessa about an hour and a half ago to just to check on her. And she said that I lost my home. We've lost our family home, Steve, but we're, we're all safe. And we exchanged several other messages, and I, she told me that she, her and her family had moved in with her mother a few miles away and that she was going back up the mountain as she talked to me. I think she was driving and texting. <laughs> yeah. And going back up and she said, I'm going back up the mountain to uh, see, see what I can save. Man, if that if that's going to take endurance. And you know what? It's going to take endurance with us too to keep folks in our prayers. To, to realize that only by the grace of God is this happening to our fellow classmate, not to us. So be aware. Be aware that folks deal with a lot of stuff, and we need to support them uh, with their endurance, and it's a part of what makes us have endurance as well as business folks. Every day you're going to have the opportunity to have folks talk to you or come and see you about they need to buy this or they want to do that. But having your radar on is going to help you know that everyone is dealing with something. And if you're the individual that has a radar that's tuned in to identifying with your customer more than I just want to make a dollar off of you, but yes, if I can help you in any way feel better about today or share a comment or uh, have a moment of prayer or reflection, that's the person that's going to make you the best business person in town. It's the person that folks will come back to. <laughs> the gratification is so very important when you feel good about doing that. I, I feel good about reaching out to Vanessa, and I think that she will receive my message knowing I'm just not trying to stick my nose in her business. But people who care help other people. Folks don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So find the endurance to get that message out there, to withstand the hardship for the long time, because sometimes in business there's going to be some prolonged tough times. Can you imagine what our small business counterparts over in those towns that have been washed away, what they're facing tonight? I can because I've, I've had my business in jeopardy number of years ago with a hurricane or two. So keep them in your prayers. So let's move on now about something else. Ready? I sent you those emails, and one of them is an email training. Go back and look at that email because in that email, I showed you eight different things that you can do that we've, we have talked about specifically in this course, ways that you can make your email communications more effective and get the messages out there that will help you get an order and also hold on to a customer. The initial email, the initial thing they see needs to have these messages in them that let them know that you do care, that there's more here than just a 
a, a hardcore uh, business deal. But we're, we're after a sustained relationship for the uh, uh, sustainability of our business. I sent you emails on how to put videos together. And it's easy to do a simple video. But once you get that basic video done, then you have the ability to add text, scrolling text in it, to insert pictures and photographs, uh, voiceover, uh, specifications, prices. If, you, if you've got a basic video and you want me to help you jazz it up, oh, we'll do that. I've got uh, virtual assistants and I'll pay them to take your basic video if you'll send it to me and we'll fix it up for you. Uh, one of the first um, folks that we did that for was Vanessa that we've talked about earlier tonight. And it's just amazing. And when you look at one of the emails I sent you, it uh, mentions Vanessa. It's, uh, I've been sending it out for a couple of years. <clears throat> Get into Facebook. I'm I'm not a big fan of everybody telling everything you know about everybody. I'm not, that's not about that. But I do know that Facebook is an important vehicle to help move your business forward. I'd like for you to find me on Facebook, uh, like me, let me see your uh, your pages so that I can watch your business uh, grow and go from there as well. How do we find customers? I want your business marketing campaign to be like a magnet that brings customers in. We want the pool to be coming to you. We don't want to have to go out and grab and talk with each customer out there in the world where they are. It just takes too much time. There's some exceptions to this that I want you to go out, but not all the time. I want your business to keep growing by pulling people in like a magnet doing the videos, doing the database, getting the right web pages so that people will see these links, see you, hear you, uh, and want to come and, and ask you a question. To get your information out to the right people, we need to think about the target groups of customers that will be most likely to do business with us and where they are. I like to use the word target. And as we're doing this tonight, we'll talk about the different regions, uh, the different areas where, where your business will probably do best, and also how are we going to approach them. So what are we shooting at our pretend targets here? Arrows. And we're going to have an arrow that's going to help us think about what method are we going to reach out to people with. And then uh, what, what, uh, what, Guerrilla marketing uh, secrets or twists can we use? And what's guerrilla marketing mean? That's the that's going the extra mile to surprise people, to stretch the rules, to get the most uh, information that we can uh, to our customers. And the third era is what media are we going to use? So there's a lot to consider and putting together. How do we help customers find us? And excuse me. <clears throat> and to help customers find us, we're going to target them first and then send them information that draws like a magnet to bring them to you. So region-wise, in your business, what region are you planning on doing the most business? Is it uh, right in your own neighborhood? Fine. Is it 50 to 80 miles out statewide? What What? How would you go about reaching those particular people? Well, then the media that we might use in those regions might be my business on Google. Your mobile page is always important. Social media pages are really important locally, especially Facebook. Print ads, signs that you have out. Uh, there's several medias that you can use, but you probably don't need to use them all because you probably, it would run your cost up so much, you'd waste a lot of money. So as we think about which ones will probably serve us best, we'll be able to put together the best marketing campaign. Uh, now, if your uh, region is nationwide, then we would use different types of media and different types of methods. We'd use more Google ads. 
My business on Google, again, is important. But videos will become really nice and important because videos promoted the right way go nationwide. Folks can search uh, for them through Google and find your videos to bring you to you uh, bring them to you through your video probably a lot faster, a lot easier, a lot less money than uh, they would come to you uh, through a, a, a web page. Today, I got two phone calls today. Both phone calls opened up, hey, Mr. Carver, I just watched you on, video, on a YouTube video. One was in Charlotte and one was in Georgia. And neither one of them knew anything about our website or our Facebook pages or other things we did, they saw the videos. They had typed in, they had typed in a search term of, for the type of equipment that I'm selling, and I had a video that was titled exactly the same thing as what they typed, typed in. Therefore, my old ugly mug and, and message about we got something to sell came to them, and they immediately called me up on the phone. Now, that what I have may not be real pretty. It may not look like TV advertising, but it's living proof that it's effective and you can do it as well. It don't have to be super, super effective. Now, targeted customer groups are just as important as you having a good feel for the region. And now, who are the particular type of customers? What niche market of customers can you find? So. I want to tell you something. There are some real effective ways that work. And we've already talked about some of these last week. Remember last week I told you we were going to talk about marketing tools and this week how to use them. The most effective way uh, to help customers find you, the most effective way to help customers find you is the least costly way as well. Isn't that something? The best way is the least expensive way. Now, it's hard to find that situation lots of times, but listen to me, this is the way it is, because the most effective way to help you get a, a new customer is the work that you do with your mobile web page. With your mobile web page. The image and message that comes up on your telephone when someone is searching for you and your business on that telephone, what's coming up? Now, I'd asked you guys to send me a screenshot of your mobile page, and I hadn't got a single one from you. That's telling me, number one, that you just slept through the lesson last week, and I know that's not the case. <laughs> but maybe you're not very proud of it at this point. Well, let's move in the direction to get proud of it because your mobile web page is super important. Now, this is the mobile web page you'll find when you search for carverequipment.com. Notice what is highlighted on this mobile page on the screen. It's that blue button. That's the biggest thing on the screen. And what that is all about is trying to encourage the customer to touch that button and call me. Let's get a telephone call started. Because if someone will call me on the telephone, I am professional enough, as you will be, to, to, to take over, to capture them, to hear what they're saying, to move right into how can I help you? How can we create a relationship? Tell me what's on your mind. I'm listening. I'm here for you. I took your call. I get these calls a lot during the day, and I'll tell you right now, I get a lot of spam calls too, and they're so aggravating, but I answer every call because some of the calls that are marked spam are indeed customers calling me in, and I don't know why they're marked spam, but they are, so I take them off. And lots of times the first words out of those customers' mouth are, thank you for taking the call, Mr. Carver. Thank you, Steve. I'm so glad you answered the phone. You cannot believe how how hard it is to get someone to answer the phone anymore. Everyone wants you to leave a message. Well, when someone wants to talk, they appreciate it. So think about giving a, your mobile page uh, this power. And then when you get calls, don't screen every call and make them listen to a message. If, if you see that it's not a, 
uh, 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 someone you don't want to talk to, answer the phone. And if it's a customer calling, be happy. If it's a spam call, hang up on them. Don't waste a, a single minute with them. You don't want to. But answer those calls for your customers. They will really appreciate it. And you will be so gratified to hear the people being happy that you have a chance to talk to you. Now, the rest of your mobile page, I like to use photographs of my products because someone may not know exactly what I would call it, but they'll recognize what it is when they see the photograph. And when they touch one of those pictures, they'll go to my landing pages at the website. Not my information pages, not uh, uh, photos or general information, but a landing page. When they leave my telephone mobile page, they go to a landing page. And remember last week we said that's a page where people get a chance to buy something. So work on your mobile page. It's the least expensive way to make the most money you'll ever make. I've got a uh, landing page for the books that I sell at Amazon. That's a picture of those. Again, see the blue button? Go from there. Now, what is the second most effective way? The second least costliest way as well to help customers find you? Well, I like to call it the old-fashioned way. Do you get a clue what it is? What's the next effective way that we can do it? We've already talked about this, too. But it is that old-fashioned, raving fan customer. So let's go back to chat here, and let me help try to drive this home good. What does RFC stand for? In your business and in my business and in the rest of our business life, these people that are so much stronger than the 27 times rule, what does raving fan customer or what does RFC stand for? I want you to type in the words raving fan customer. Thank you, Sarah. Because the more you type it in and the more you think about it, the more it becomes ingrained as a part of your DNA, the more you're going to remember they are so important. So when you have raving fan customers, thank you all for typing there, then you're able to use the continuous promotions, the fresh bait in the water, going out to your customer database, but mainly your Raven fan customers, to remind them that you're still in business, that you're still hungry, that you still need more business. And the day they see that email, they're glad to see it because they love you. It, it will never be spam to them. They'll say, okay, Miko's out here working again. Uh, uh, Sarah's working this thing. Uh, uh, Trust got some new flowers she wants me to be aware of. They're glad to get these e emails for you, and it reminds them that you're there. As they talk to other people during the day, they will pass on the good news because they want you to do business in good, good business, and they will forward your email to other people they know that might need the products that you're pushing. It's a big deal, and it doesn't cost you hardly any pennies at all. It's number two. Number three, the new fashion way. What is the most effective way to help customers find you? Now, this information should be worth millions of dollars to you. I mean, it is good stuff. It's the secret stuff. But it's not costing you a penny. No, I'm bringing it to you because I want to share it with you, and I want to see you put it to work. What's the third most effective way to help customers find you? It's real, real simple. Put a put a program in effect. Remember that five-star plan we put to work? There's a lot of different ways to do that. But the most effective way is to be assertive enough to get in business, but to get your My Business on Google account up and running. Because it's not going to cost you hardly anything but will automatically get you active in the Google world. And Sarah probably can give us lots of information about that as we want to dive into it deeper when she's ready. But listen, Google is what's happening. Google is making YouTube's work. Google will put people in your business if you have an account there. It's easy, easy, and so important. Make sure that you are moving forward to getting your business in Google. This is what one of them looks like right here. 
Now, five years ago, two ladies down in the Hempstead area near Wilmington decided they were going to get into the crab cake business. They wanted to make their own crab cakes and freeze them and then sell them in the Wilmington Hempstead area. So they came to the, uh, the presentations, the seminars at the time in Wilmington, <clears throat> got to learn how to do the cooking, learned all about commercial kitchens, got into that, and got into business. And once they were ready to start selling products, they got their Google My Business account, and on day one, things started happening for them. It's just so powerful, just so powerful, and I want you to have a, an account on, online. Number four, I mentioned it already, so I won't spend much time. Your YouTube videos and a YouTube channel are big-time inexpensive that bring you big-time results. So stop thinking about it. Stop making yourself promises to me or to yourself. Uh, quit procrastinating and get into videos. Get into them. I'll do all I can to help you. I've already told you that you can use this platform, freeconferencecall.com, to make your own videos if you like. Or you can go to the YouTube uh, channel, and it gives you all types of t tutorials to get started. And if you uh, get into it and you're ready to to, to, you got your raw ones, you got your basic introductions or your different things and you want to juice them up, make them more professional, give more information, I've got folks that will help you do that uh, with, uh, just like y'all. So as you move into your skill levels, uh, making bigger and better videos, uh, uh, let me help you or uh, find someone that can make your videos really shine. Uh, Brooks, I want to say to you how much I've enjoyed what you've been putting out there. And I see, I see you doing a tour on a sunny day of your flower farm uh, with, a, with a video camera and, it, and you explaining what the different flowers are as an introduction to your farm uh, and a tour and ending it up with an invitation for uh, people to uh, ask you about more products or different things and just see how powerful that would be for you. you got a, a great presentation. So... Please, please move in that direction if you can. I'm looking forward to getting that video from you. So now, what's the next thing? We talk, those are tools. Those are methods. Those are, are tools that, and different medias that you can be using. So now, what else can really help customers find you? The more profit centers you have, the more marketable profit centers you have, I will assure you, the more opportunities you're going to have for customers to find you. And why is that? Because the more things that we can advertise with SEO power, then the more customers are apt to see what you're doing. So having a diversified base of profit centers will help a diversified base of customers find you. The more uh, profit centers you have, as you'll see later tonight, the tremendous amount of more DBAs doing business as labels, we can name those profit centers, which just explode the opportunities for customers to come and do business with you. Yeah, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just applying some, some basic information. So as you identify the target groups for your different customers, as you identify the target groups for your different customers and, and have those listed as targets, then we're going to be able to send more uh, profit, uh, 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 profit center information to them. And then we need to feed that database. We need to bring people new names, new email addresses into our database right away so we can start sending the message out to them. Eight, the SEO we talked about earlier. The SEO is the tool that we're going to put together with our landing pages, with our web pages that are landing pages, to become productive. One is just a thing. The other is just a thing. But when we put SEO alive and well, into the content on our landing pages, we've got power. We've got dynamite. Are you using SEO on your landing pages? If the answer is yes, wonderful. 
But anything less than that means you got some work to do. And, and let me encourage you to become motivated and assertive to get busy with it. Because a landing page that is powered by SEO, right stuff, is going to make you some money. Okay? That's why it's important. So, one of the study guides that's been emailed to you, uh, and I want to tell you that I hope you're getting these emails. And Sarada, I am glad to have you with us tonight. And I don't think I have sent you any email, but I will tomorrow. Uh, so that's, don't you worry about that. You'll get it. I want you to spend some time with the study guide about SEO. I know we'll cover the basics here in a few minutes. But there's a little bit more in the study guide that you will be well informed to own it, to have a good grasp about what this is all about. Because if you've got a grasp of what it's all about, then it will become second nature to you that as you're doing your marketing down the road, you'll start, you'll start using the SEO uh, strategies to help your uh, marketing become more effective. Okay, so this is an important study guide. Uh, hold on to it. Uh, please try to read through it when you get a chance, and it will really, really help you. So now we're going to talk about what is SEO. I mean, you can go to college classes all over the world. I'm sure on the Small Business Network, they've got classes every single day on search engine optimization. And indeed, if you've got the time and you feel like that's a good thing, you're into it, Please go to those classes. But I'm going to spend the time on SEO or the items basically I know have made me money. I know that even in my low degree of understanding on, uh, on the Internet issues, that SEO is important and it's been important to me and I want to share some things with you. First of all, what is it? I consider SEO, and this is my definition, I consider SEO a, a set of skills and an art form that applies to web page content, to what's the content in a page that helps the customers find you quicker and easier and before all your competition. It enables the search engines to, to find your page before it finds your competition's page. And when it finds you before your competition's page, then you get a higher ranking, a higher placement on that on that web page when it comes back telling you where to find what you're looking for. You want to be the firstest with the mostest. You want to be number one in line or as close to the top of the page as you can get. So that's what SEO is going to help us get there. And there's a few things that we can do to help us really uh, improve our situation to improve that ranking. There's a few things that you can do that will make a major difference uh, in your pages. There's nine primary factors that I've determined that have made a super difference for me, and I think that will make a super difference for you as well. Now, Sarah is listening to us tonight, and she is a Google pro. She's going to be a Google counselor that will help people with all things Google. So, Sarah, I'm, I'm, I'm sending out a challenge and a request to you right now with all these witnesses on board, all of our family members here on board. I want you to uh, look at what I'm putting out here, and if you can send me an improved list of things that I might say different and better to help everyone, I'd certainly appreciate that. And I will certainly sing your praises for the rest of my life as someone that will help people manipulate Google better. But SEO, here we go. What are some things that will make a primary difference in, in whether or not customers find you? Remember, that's what we're after here, how to help customers find you. And I'll tell you that if the name of your web page, if, the, if, if within your UL, uh, URL, which is the name of a web page, if within that name is what the customer has typed in as a search term, your chances for coming up are going to be tremendously improved. If you've got the word in your web page name that the customer is looking for, 
it just makes sense to me that you're going to come up ahead of everyone else. Even to the point that I have through the years when I used to be a Kubota dealer, K-U-B-O-T-A, Kubota, can be misspelled about 15 different ways people can tear it up, I want to tell you. I even found out that I would have a web page and name it a, mis, a misspelled Kubota, and I'd get great traffic right to it. Because a lot of people like me misspell words and type it in as a search term, and if you've got a page out there that's named that, it's like a magnet. That's what we're after. The mobile-friendly factors of every web page are really important. Someone that knows how to build web pages, which I call a webmaster. The people that have helped me through the years, they're my webmasters. They need to understand what makes uh, a page much more friendly for a mobile page and how to affect it and how to call it, how to name it. I don't know how, but I got good people that do. And so you want your mobile pages to be really good and really active. And there, I am told that the mobile pages are a whole different family uh, within your website than just your regular pages. So find someone to tell you and help you make your mobile pages effective. When I send in a new web page to my webmaster, when I'm changing things around, I have learned now to, to ask him and to remind him, please make, put this up on our website the usual way, but also come back with a mobile page to make it very effective for that person searching for me on their phone. Please do that. Because I see when the emails start coming in the mail on the forms, I can tell which ones are coming in from a mobile page reference versus the other page. And a lot, a large percentage, of the email that I get in from my website are coming through the mobile pages. So I know it's an important thing to do. The inclusion of videos has become the dynamite. Several years ago, Google bought YouTube. And when they did, they determined that they would say to the world of, of uh, internet users, if you have a video, a YouTube video on your web page, Google will, will find it before they find any other web pages that do not have a YouTube video related to the search term. Hence, I started putting videos on my web pages immediately. And I can tell you that what they were saying was true because my video viewership and my web page viewership skyrocketed immediately it would each time we did it. So don't wait around on this. Don't procrastinate one day about getting into the YouTube video business and learning how to uh, get those uh, embedded into your web pages. It's a big deal. It puts you ahead of your competition. Keyword search terms. That's the old school. Before videos, that was probably the most important thing. But let's talk about the definition of content. When you look at a web page, the content are the words that are typed in there, not the images that are projected on it. The, the title of those images is important because it's projected in, in the, uh, the things that uh, the search engines see. But the text, the, the text, the words, the sentences that are into your uh, web pages, that's the content that and the photos. And the more times that you have the word that someone is searching for as a part of the text in your web page, the more likely it is that a search engine will find them and improve your ranking. So I'll get into this very deep. This, that is a key factor that you and I can keep doing a lot to do about. Number five, talked about this last week a little bit. Add as many links into your web pages as you get, as you think is practical. More the better. But I don't want you to add a link into your web website or on your web pages that send your customer, your shopper, to another person's website. 
Some people may say that's a good thing to do, but Papa Steve here is going to say it's crazy as hell to do that. Excuse French. And please forgive me there. I'm sorry about that. But here's the thing. It's crazy as heck to do that because you, you've worked hard and paid good money in your marketing efforts to bring people to your web pages. Why in the world do you want to send them away? You don't. You don't want to send them to another website. You do want to keep them at your website as long as you can. Now, selfishly, I'll tell you this. You want to keep them at your website as long as you can because the longer they're at your place, they're not going to have time to be over at your competitor's place. So have good information at your website. Have a diverse profit centers so that you can, on each page, give them links that they can go to other places on your website. I have customers that, that call me up and they start reciting scripture and verse on every page related to certain products I have. I am amazing how much time people must spend at our website. And I am so glad that they do because they're answering frequently asked questions themselves. And a lot of them say, Man, you share enough information that I feel like I, I really know what I'm talking about here, but I have a few questions. And that's good because then you have the chance to communicate and listen, have some fun, build that relationship one-on-one, -on -one, and that's how you do that. But you need to keep them at your website with good information. Give them a link about how this works and where this comes from and how to adjust this and and, and other information, frequently asked questions. Put them out there. Add the links. Next, I want to say to you that maybe at your location you've got high-speed internet. I'm I'm very blessed to have it. When I when I type on the web page, pop, it comes right up. Sometimes some are slower than others, but usually it's really fast. But be aware that all over this nation, a lot of places in this state, do not have high-speed internet. A lot of places are still using dial-ups. A lot of places are just creeping along. And the different things that you may do with your web pages may make them load real slow. When you, somebody clicks on a web page, there's a chance that if it hasn't been uh, doctored up by your webmaster, it'll come up so slow that the customer won't wait for it. They just move on. I do that a lot, and y'all do probably as well. So how fast your pages load is really important with whether or not you can hold them there long enough to see what you're trying to sell. Okay? Next, you can, you can improve helping customers find you through pay-for-click. And what that means is you're paying extra money to companies to help them send customers to your page. You're paying extra money to get someone to click on your web page. This is a very powerful tool, especially for new businesses or special promotions that you have on to bring people in. It kind of lets you cheat against everybody else. It's just being organic. In other words, not doing anything special like pay for click. However, we may be aggressive enough and assertive enough to say, I don't want to wait to be organic. I'm doing all these things right, but still, I'm so far down the page, I'm on page two, because all these people that are doing pay for click are in front of you. And you can't do a thing about that except get in the pay for click game. Well, there's a couple of more things I'll tell you about that. What is an example of pay for click? When you go to Facebook and you boost an ad, boosting means that you're paying them extra to send your message to certain people. And Facebook is a good way to learn how to do pay for click. It's dangerous, though, to the point that you're giving a company your credit card information, and you have, that's always a reason to have a red flag. So as you start the process of pay for click, Get some good information or let someone help you that's doing it that really knows what they're doing to help you kind of get into that. 
Otherwise, you may be taking some risk that I don't want you to take. I've had some bad surprises there. Uh, not my fault necessarily, but some of them were. Uh, so you just have to be careful. But I use them every day. Uh, I, I do the boosting all the time because for a little bit of money, I can send my messages to the right territory, to the right age group, to men or women, what I choose, uh, what time of day. I mean, there's a lot of options that you can do with these pay-for-click things. So it's there for you, but it's going to cost you more money than you have to spend unless you're ready to make an investment in your marketing. Remember, you're not going to get a return on investment unless you make an investment. And pay for click is one of those examples how you go there. That was number nine. So here's a, uh, an example of a web page, and I'm show, showing you here the pay for click ads. When you, when you, uh, these are the sponsored ads that they're sometimes called. When you see uh, these type of ads at the top of a page, they're the pay for click ads. People have paid more money to be in that position. But these, and then when you see these down here that look like this where the cursor is, those are people that have my business on Google accounts and they're in front of everybody else. That's one good reason why my business at Google account is such a good investment because it will put you at a higher ranking than organic ads and lots of times a higher ranking than pay for click ads. And you didn't have to pay for click if you did the my business at Google. So just remember that. It's a strategy that can make a lot of money for you. Using social media, Facebook and the other social medias, eBay, Craigslist, these places, uh, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, have real strong search engine attractiveness. And sometimes we can, we can do really good work out here in the rest of the world with our SEO smarts and still not, not reach anywhere close to the visibility that an ad would get at Facebook, eBay, or Craigslist or Marketplace. So I will encourage you to use Marketplace, Facebook primarily because that's not going to cost you any extra money. Uh, eBay will cost you a little extra money. But you can put a really inexpensive ad at eBay and a no-cost ad at, uh, at Marketplace and Facebook and put your link in that ad, the link to your landing page and good uh, um, text using the right words. And those... Uh, ads that you put there will come up faster with a Google search than any websites will because the search engines really spend a lot of time at those places. So I do that a lot and it really pays off. But you need a landing page with your, your own landing page that you can bring people to through that link. Get good at at least one social media. There's a lot of them out here, and a lot of people say one's better than the other for their particular business, and I, I understand that. <clears throat> I particularly think Facebook is the easiest one to learn on, and that's why I recommend it. But all of them are good. But you've got to be careful now. If you try to spend all your time getting real good at one social media, and then you expand it to getting good at a lot of social medias, there's a good chance you will get lost in the forest and not be able to see the tree. Stay good at promoting your products. Remember, you always need to come back home to spend your time on your product, on your Facebook account, on your uh, website, with your customer database. You own these things. When you go on social media, other people own the message you should send it out there. So look after your own uh, your own personal property. Many of the things that I mentioned, what can be done 
best or if at all by someone that's a professional doing website work. Those web those webmasters are very special. And here I'll say to you, some people claim to be webmasters and they just say, I can build a website for you. And that is so wonderful. And I'll do it for cheap. As a matter of fact, there are some companies do it for nothing for you. I'll help I'll put your website up and that'll cost you a penny. Well, what's in it for them? Remember last week we talked about uh, people doing that kind of stuff, taking advice from them? Well, you want to have your website make money. And folks that are saying they'll do it for nothing, you're probably going to get nothing in return except a pretty picture. These freebie websites usually have awful landing pages because that's just what they're doing. They're trying to get you hooked. The very minute your website starts drawing a lot of attention, they're going to be sending you messages about how you can do this, 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 and that, but it's going to cost you a little bit of money. They'll help you with it, but they're going to get paid well. And you got to be careful because you're being hoodwinked because that was their objective all along. Papo Stevo here is to tell you, if your website is not making money, if it's not bringing in the customers, if it's not attracting the people, then you're doing some things that we've just talked about. In other words, you're, doing, you're not doing a lot of the things that we've just talked about. And maybe you need a webmaster. Maybe you need to pay someone a little bit of money to make some changes to help you start making money. That's the way it is. Waiting around for something to happen that doesn't happen is not making money. It's not good entrepreneurship. Let's say your website's been up for several months or several years, and it's just not performing. There's a reason for it. Find out the reason and fix it. I don't say that maybe the two or three main reasons it's just not performing have all been covered in the previous eight items we just talked about, starting with your mobile page. Promise you. Next, your landing pages are not performing. So if you don't have a website, let's make money with it. And if your webmaster don't know what they're doing or cannot tell you why you're not getting traffic, get another webmaster. Yep, they're not ready for the, they're not ready for the money making game. They just want to say they can make you a pretty website. And anyone can put up pictures. Anyone can put up music. Anyone can put up design. But it takes a salesman and an entrepreneurial spirit to go after the competition. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. That's the assertiveness and the endurance that we're going to need. Now, using the right keywords is the least expensive way. It doesn't cost you a penny. It will cost you some thought to make things happen. So you're trying to figure out what is a keyword. That's what people type in when they're searching. And I'm here to tell you that you can have, you can have a, a piece of paper like this, and 20 people might call it 20 different names. And that name that they're looking for is the keyword that they type in. And that brings in keywords hyphen DBAs because Steve O's going to teach us and preach it, okay? What, is, what are the right keywords? How can you find a large number of keywords for the product that you are offering? How can you find a good number of keywords for the service that you're offering? My friend, it's on the Internet. <laughs> it's amazing. You can go and type in if on your computer keyword search terms, and there will come up a long list of websites that will give you options for different keywords free. All you have to do is go to their site and type in the words. Not only if you find the best ones that I, that I was able to find, they will not only give you a long list of suggested keywords, they'll tell you how many people per day are using those keywords. The technology on this is astounding. Now, on your screen, you got an example. I was thinking about uh, uh, selling shoes, and so I wanted to see what what if I type in the the, uh, the keyword for uh, uh, shoes, what the options might be. 
and uh, run issues is what I really wanted to focus on. And they gave me a thousand or more different options. But if you'll notice over on the right-hand side, they gave me the ones that were bringing in the most traffic. Isn't that amazing? For example, on that particular day, Brooks shoes happened to be at the top of the list. For whatever reason, they were the most popular, and I don't know why I'm not into shoes. But on that day, 280,000 people had typed in that search term. And running shoes, 226,000 people had typed that in. So this is telling you, if you're selling running shoes, what words people are you looking for to do it? Down at the bottom, people were typing in best running shoes and how many do it. So as you're looking for the right words to put on your web pages, this is where you find them. And another message comes through real strong here. Notice these name brands, Hoka's and Brooks and, and Adidas. When you are able to add a product line to your profit centers that has a good name brand rep uh, 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 reputation, a, an established label or logo, when you can add the top of the line items to your products, they sell themselves. They indeed sell themselves because all you have to, to type in on your search terms is the name brand and the product. And that will quadruple or more the number of people that will come to your website to shop for it. So a good lesson to learn. It's good to have economy products to meet that need for people that are really got a close budget. But it's really good to have the top end, the very best product lines as well, because they sell themselves. They've already got an established customer base that you can immediately uh, type into. That's important information. <clears throat> then if you look at the bottom of this is one of my web pages, <clears throat> down at the bottom, <clears throat> in the lower header, and in these headers, each web page has three parts. The top part, the top header, the center part is your information sharing, and the bottom part is the bottom uh, header. The bottom part is where I like to plug in context words, nothing but text words. Look down at the bottom where it starts out over in this, this blog, Tiller, see down here where I got my cursor dancing? I've just typed in the different products that I sell, just the general name brands. Just have a long list in very small print, just a block added. And I change this every now and then for effectiveness. Also have other information about credit card sales, shipping, general information about doing business with me. But that bottom block is what I'm talking about right now. You can take a, a uh, on, on any web page, and type in the, the context words that you think are important to your website, to your business, and just put that block of words. Uh, and if you put it in that bottom margin, it'll be on every one of your web pages. And customers won't ever see it. They'll scroll down there and say, well, I don't particularly want to read all these different stuff. But let me tell you who does see it. The search engines see it. So this is a way that you can load, preload, your web pages with lots of different context words to help uh, uh, search engines find your pages and bring them to you. That's, and just plug them in down there. Here's an example about locations. When you start plugging in locations like the names of towns or cities or states or different things, just as effective. Because in the cell phone world, if you're when you're riding around at a certain tower, that tower is in a town or a location. And if you have that town, that same town or location anywhere on one of your web pages, it's another piece of bait for the search engine to find. Because the search engines will send people to your cell phone if you're in that area. Remember when you're uh, searching on your cell phone, it, it, uh, sometimes you'll type in the search term and other businesses will come up that you didn't ask for, but it is a business in 
in Wilmington or it's a business in Charlotte or it's a business in Rocky Mount. If you're riding around in, in Rocky Mount, then if you've got Rocky Mount written on one of your web pages, indeed, whatever they're searching for, that Rocky Mount may pop right up. Pretty amazing. How do I know this? Oftentimes, I'll get a call from an example like a lady called me up, Mr. Carter, I want to buy one of your cephal bar mowers. All right, that's great. We talk about it, so that about the price, got into all the detail, and, and then she said, now, 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 where are you located? Like, I'm going to come by and say hello, or I'll bring you a check. And I said, well, I'm in Dunn, North Carolina. She said, holy moly, I'm in Santa Barbara, California. No way. Yeah, I'm in Dunn, North Carolina. She said, I have no idea why I've called you, because you're half a you're all the way across the country. I said, Ma'am, we sell and we ship right straight to California like all the other states. We sure do. Well, I know why that phone rang, what she was looking for, because on a lot of my web pages, I'll have California written down there. On some of the web pages, actually, I have all the states listed with the major towns. So there are different kind of secret sauce that you can use to help people find you that a lot of folks just don't know about. And this is one of them, is loading your context on your different pages. Here's an example of a blown up of, of one of those. Now let's get back to the landing pages. You won't, you, you ever been around a lot of flies in the springtime or the late summer when the flies just come out and they're so awful that you look for any way to kill them and get rid of them? And one thing that sometimes we'll do is put up these fly strips that they stick to them. You know what I'm talking about? Messy and ugly, but pretty effective sometimes. I want your landing pages to be like a fly strip. Yep. If a customer's flying by like an innocent fly and they happen to zoom in and land on your landing strip, I want them stuck there until they give you some money out of their pocket. And how do you get them to stay there? First of all, you do not say take it or leave it. Nowhere on a page are we going to say to that customer, take it or leave it. We'll give them a price and make sure they understand it's below normal selling price or normal below suggested retail. And we'll give them a little sticker that says order now. And, and we'll give them some uh, pricing options that let them actually know that they have something to do with what the end price will be. They can pay in different methods and get different prices. Yeah, and I offer all these with a, a large variance there of maybe twelve, fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm going to make the same amount of profit whichever way they go. So I know my business, and I know that if someone pays me with a credit card, it's going to cost me three and a half to four and a half percent more money. Or if they send in a, a, a wire transfer, it's a thirty dollar fee. Or if they send a, a check in or cash, that's, that's the basic, uh, no extra charge fees on that. So I give the customers the options of different ways to pay. Therefore, they have a thinking process to go through to, to analyze what's the best way to do business with us. I also give them the option in the script up here when they start reading the script to let them know that they can get different types of shipping costs. Make a difference in two or three hundred dollars in your shipping cost. Depending on where you are, you may or may not have to pay taxes on it. You might be able to save several hundred dollars by picking it up at the truck terminal. So as you start sharing this information with your customers on your landing pages, it holds them there. It keeps them there. They start getting interested. They start appreciating the fact that it is not take it or leave it. Because when it's take it or leave it, customers know there are built-in profits there that the people are, are, are going to make uh, uh, no matter what, and they're not giving you the option to, to maybe save a few dollars and get a little bit better price. I'm making the same amount of money with whichever option somebody goes with here and feel good about it, and I want you to have that. Presenting that on your landing page and giving them places to order now or call now 
or to ask the question is the key to having that fly paper. If they're stopping and trying to figure all this out or sitting there writing down their list of questions, then they're not shopping somewhere else. Okay? And that's the objective of, of building a landing page that, that actually creates orders for you. Now, one of the ways to get people staying at your landing pages is going back to that content. Notice on this particular landing page example, I've got the, drum, the word drum mower. That's one of my products. I've got the word drum mower listed time after time after time. See that text right there? And I used to sell this brand of Baylor where I appear up at Twine Baylor time after time after time. The word Baylor is there. I could have just said it one time, you ditto marks or saved a lot of text and a lot of reading and such as that for my customer. No. I wanted to leave that text content there to help search engines find my page. Say that again. I left repeated words, text words, on the page time after time after time for the sole purpose of helping search engines <clears throat> find that page when someone typed in one of those words as their search term. It's effective. Use it. Lastly, <laughs> marketing in general. The old term about real estate purchases and such as that, location, 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 as true as it's ever been. And as you think about how to help customers find you, not necessarily on the internet, but there as well, location always has to come into your DNA way of thinking. Every facet of marketing location comes into play. If it's on a web page, experts will tell you that some folks will look at a certain a part of the web page before they do others. Some folks like certain colors better than others. There's a certain text sizes and types that will are more friendly, uh, user friendly to uh, surfers on the website. A, a webmaster is schooled in that, and they can help you with that. But in the rest of the world, where you are. Are you, are you being seen and are you seeing? My daddy used to say, Steve, you got to see and be seen. So your store location, where you place your signs, the merchandising that you do inside the store, the merchandise you do inside your website. Um, when you go into a room person, where do you stand? How do you present yourself? Where do you sit at a table? Are you being seen and be seen? Are you there to make the right contacts? Are you there to take things in? Do you have a strategy? All this is going to come into deep play when we talk about negotiating uh, and, and, and uh, forecasting. So it's important that you think about where you're positioned in yourself. Where you're positioned in your ads. I'll tell you in some ads that if you don't have the right location, don't spend any money with that publication. You're just wasting your time. Very, very important strategy. <clears throat> the five-star plan we talked about last week. How can you put this stuff to work right now? Identify your profit centers and your upsell items. Identify the seasons that are important to you. And one of the handouts that are in your study guides tonight are slogans and strategies about holiday marketing. Don't waste it. Get your targeting uh, strategies in line. Make it, make it real for you. Uh, think about the look and hook features and do your videos. What are the look and hook features again? You need to look good enough to hold somebody's attention for a few minutes. And the hook is in every ad is something in there that's Encouraging someone to call you up now and do business, not to wait, not to procrastinate. This is a method of of, of, uh, of motivating is putting a hook in there. A hook is the call to action. Come on, let's do some business now. And then let's quit talking about all this stuff and put it to work. Where you don't do that, your Facebook landing pages, your Facebook mobile page, excuse me, your website landing pages, 
your personal and business pages at Facebook. Get your email blasts going out like I blasted you guys today. Think about getting your links and, and messages at other websites that bring people back to you, such as Facebook and Marketplace um, and, and eBay. <clears throat> I'm not kidding about the YouTube channel. That's powerful. If you're not taking advantage of it, you're kind of missing the boat, no doubt. So let's talk about finding the customers now, helping them find you. What are we going to use? Media, the methods, and guerrilla marketing for each one of your targeted groups. How many targeted groups have you written down already? Who are your niche market customers? Mm -hmm. It's part of the homework stuff, you know. Who are your niche market customers? Who is more likely to buy from you right away? I like to call it the low-hanging fruit. That term's been around a long time. That's like when you're picking grapes or apples or oranges or whatever you're picking. That they're the, That's the low-hanging fruit. That's the easiest to reach up and grab and fill your basket up. It costs you the least amount of effort and money to fill your basket up. Why do we need to trek all the way across the farm to some high-hanging fruit that we don't fall off a ladder to get when we got low-hanging fruit right here? Who is your low-hanging fruit? Who are the customers that you can reach out to right away and maybe do some business right away? That's the list that you want to have. That's your targeted customer list. <clears throat> There's a big mistake that we make through the years in business, and that is letting really important customer groups fall through the crack. In other words, I've got all of them I can handle. I don't need any more customer groups. I'm, I'm, I'm working as hard as I can. We can't, we can't accept that. I, as a coach, can't let you accept it because there is a significant reason that you don't want a good customer group not to receive your attention. Let's talk about that just a little bit. When, when, when we're out here trying to make money and knowing how important that is to us, cash flow is, we don't want to let a customer group fall through the crack. Have you ever been around anyone that was laying brick? The, the masons that, that build great big buildings with bricks? You know, some of these buildings, like Empire State buildings, others in Raleigh and all around the world, some of these bricks have millions and billions of brick, single bricks that are holding it together. Well, maybe you haven't been around a brick mason, so let me tell you a little secret. The next time you are walking by some masons laying brick, just stop. Stop and listen to the music. Brick masons make music. When a brick mason is, is laying, a, laying brick, he'll get the, the, the right amount of mortar, He'll make sure the bricks are level with that line up there, and then he'll put his plumb bob and make sure that there, there's no sway in the wall that is vertical. All that's important, and that right amount of mortar in there with just amount of texture is really important. But every time he gets that brick just right and is ready to walk away from it, he'll take his, he'll take his trowel and take the handle like this, and he'll go, he'll hit it usually four times. On every brick that's ever laid in a building, the mason went. What was he doing? What is that all about? Why go to that extra trouble and noise on every single brick? Well, what he's doing is, or she, there's what they call setting, S-E-T-T-I-N-G, setting the mortar. And they're making a seal when he hits it. It binds it together. And that one brick then becomes part of the wall. He knows that buildings are built by laying one brick right. 
one brick at a time, doing it right, doing it just right, and before you leave it, you set it in place. The point here is we need to do the same thing with our customers, and we build our businesses one customer at a time. And while we have them and we're, we're, we're building our really initial relationship, we make sure that we're using these attributes that we've been talking about in our words of the week and the strategies we've talked about to make sure that before we turn that customer loose, that we set him knowing that we want him to be a raving fan customer. And there's no doubt about it. He wants to be a raving fan customer. We take the time to build the relationship. And then you build a business like these big buildings are made out of brick that last. We take each one of them seriously and importantly. Whether or not we sell them something, that's not the matter. It's, you can sell them something the next hundred times you get a chance. But right now we're just trying to get that chance and get them into our system. One brick at a time. Keep that in mind. And then, you know, there's sometimes in business that at the end of the month, if we'd have had one more deal, if we'd have made profit on one more deal, we would have had a profitable month, but we didn't. Or at the end of the year, if I'd had 10 more deals, my, my whole business outlook would be better. I'd be profitable. Things would look better. My suppliers would be happier. I'd feel better. And you will learn that, like in baseball, the World Series is coming up, like in baseball, you win games consistently by hitting base hits. Yeah, the home runs are nice, but the base hits is what keeps you in the game. And in business, we stay in business by treating the customers that are bringing us a little bit of profit, a little ticket item, just as importantly as those that bring us the big ticket items, because a lot of nickels add up to a dollar, a lot of dimes add up to a dollar. So what's it all about with this with this uh, picture here? Well, this is a really important horse race, and the, the horse in the back is four inches ahead, and he wins with a photo finish. The horse in the back wins a million dollars. The horse in the front wins a bell of hay. We want to be on that winning horse, right? Because there's a lot of difference. And it's the little things. It's the little things that help that horse in the back keep winning the races. His, his rider there, his, his jockey, knew just the little things to help that horse stick his head out a little bit more, to take one more stretch, to stretch a little further to take that extra step or extra kick. That jockey wins lots of races on lots of horses because he does the little things right. And when you add up a lot of little things, you win the races. And that's what I want you to do. Learn that it's adding up the little things and putting them together with a good mortar and setting them, putting together your Raven fan customers that help you have more and more success. More and more profit centers bringing you a little bit of money from a lot of different people end up with sustainability. Oh, yeah, I want you to knock home runs as well. That's a good thing when you can, and I've knocked a lot of them through the years, but mostly you survive, and you survive by keeping a good, strong customer base. Those customer bases are your targeted customer groups. If you don't have them, you're without. So my challenge to you tonight is, as we leave the series of marketing and start doing other things in our course here, is put together your list of targeted customer groups and figure out that the methods and the, uh, and, and the ways you're going to get in touch with them, the media, and any uh, guerrilla marketing techniques you can use. You might name your groups different names, as I have these, uh, vacationers, uh, marine families, dream customers, people outside of North Carolina, strictly cell phone shoppers. Every one of you will have a little bit different situation, but think about it. 
And so I'll give you an extra little challenge this week. Send me a list of your targeted customer groups. Who are they? Be specific now. Be specific. It just can't be the World Wide Web here. Be specific. So which customers? The customers that are searching on the phone, and you know some people don't use phones. Uh, some people don't use computers to shop with. So be, be, be aware of that. But I'll tell you this, the footnote, if they're not using the phone or they're not using the computer, there's a good chance one of their children or grandchildren are actually doing the research for them. They may not mention it when they come to you, but they probably found you uh, through a loved one using their phone or their computer. One of the good customer groups that may suit your needs well are folks that are new to the community. People that are coming in and everybody's mobile now. You know about 25% of everyone in, in North Carolina changes their address usually every year. 25% are mobile going from one place to another each year. That's amazing to me. So that means that someone new coming into your area, your community, your environment, they don't have any allegiances to anyone else. So you're, they're fair grade. You're not trying to take them away from a competitor. This is all about your first impressions and how you help them find you. So important how you help them find you. Maybe your best customer groups are folks you're going to be selling souvenirs to or vacationers for one reason or another. Where are they? What is that type of customer and how can you reach out to them? Maybe you see your business being strictly to people outside of North Carolina. So we'd be using different types of medias for them. And then there's that group of people who are close to you, but they're strictly happy with the way things are. They're not looking for anybody. But you want their business, don't you? So what do you do about them? If they're not searching, how do you help them find you? Well, that's a, a different wrinkle that you need to determine. Maybe that one of the ways, maybe you're into a, the type of business or service that using pop-up displays, pop-up exhibits, going to different shows or events, getting the word out. And I know that a lot of you do that. And a lot of new companies do it. It is hard work. It can be expensive work, but sometimes helping people find you is one of the best ways to put your booth or your tent on a row of others and millions of people walk past you and you get to say hello and make contacts or maybe even sell products. There is, and I'm sharing this with you, a lot of you don't know it, there are publications and websites that tell you where all these events are being held and how to get in touch with the people that can tell you what you want to know. Uh, North Carolina Vendors Events, NC Vendor, uh, uh, Western North Carolina and Upstate, I've given you in your handout a good direct list, like here on the web page, uh, that you can see to find out uh, where the events closest to you are, or the ones that uh, zoom in on your your folks. Uh, that's an important way to go find them. Sometimes this uh, North Carolina Festival and Events, the website is amazing. Now, uh, make a note of it and go there and just see what all's going on, and you will get some great ideas on possibly things that you want to do to help promote your business. It's a very good website, and I'm happy to recommend it to you. Uh, it's got pages like this. They, look at the different, they, they line them up by dates, and then they line them up by regions. So I'll tell you what's going on in one weekend after another. <clears throat> so you've got your target group. Remember, there was three arrows for each target. What media are you going to use? What method are you going to use? And what guerrilla marketing technique might be available to you for each one of your target groups? The different medias just keep right on going and going, but the main ones are the World Wide Web, of course. Your business cell phone. Your cell phone is a heck of a media, as we've talked about. Different types of print, everything from your little business card to flyers or newspaper or magazine ads, all available to you. And then social media, which maybe you're already familiar with, but are you using it effectively to get to your target group? Uh, signs are a 
long time very effective media for certain businesses. But I'll, I'll challenge you here that, that putting up billboard signs may be works really well for some folks, but it's not. It's a waste of money for others. So give that some thought. Uh, targeted promotional ads are, are wonderful. Long-term marketing messages that's got a lot of thought in them are good. Directional and, uh, signs are very effective. Sending people uh, either to the yard that you've just mowed in a certain neighborhood or to where your booth is at a certain fair. Uh, being at, at a pop-up event is one thing, but being there doing guerrilla marketing, that is putting up some little signs around letting people know where your booth is and maybe some uh, uh, reason that they need to come on down there, that's guerrilla marketing. Knowing that people stop at uh, eateries, at recreational parks, at parking lots, different things, different customers, and sometimes with guerrilla marketing, those are the best places to put up uh, your, your promotion, your uh, balloons, or riding on the sidewalk if that's what it takes. A little secret is several people really put to good work is all over the, the, the world and all over North Carolina, there's old dilapidated signs sticking up. You see them everywhere, every day, right in your community maybe. And these signs are up there on very good structure, but people have just abandoned them. The place went out of business or for whatever reason. These people that own these signs are usually the folks that own the pro property they're sitting in, that they own the signs if it's on that property. And if you can say hello to them and let them notice, you would really appreciate the use of that sign. And uh, you, you'll put some, uh, you'll bring it back to life and maybe bring some value to it uh, if, if they let you use it for a year, a year or two um, without any charge. You'll take care of it and you'll update it for them. Oftentimes they will be happy to do that because they're tired of looking at the old mess and indeed look forward to somebody bringing this property that they own into the retail market. Don't cost you a penny to talk about it and you might get a $1,500 a month value uh, free of charge because you, the, the, uh, the, the sign people do the vinyl for you. That's not, not an issue. Guerrilla marketing, see the mailbox here? See that flag? See this piece of paper is just folded and slipped over the flag? That is about as effective and inexpensive a marketing, localized marketing as you can do. Now, you can't put that flyer inside the mailbox without breaking the law, federal law. But you can slide a, a, a flag, a, a, a message over the flag, and that's legal. Now, some neighborhoods might frown on it. I don't care. Uh, but most will not, and it's a good way, as long as you don't overdo it, to get your messages out there for basically free. Just do your flyers, uh, stop at the corner, walk down the the way and uh, slide these flags on the mailbox. Let people notice you've got something special going on, selling products, selling services. It's a good way to get your uh, your message out for almost no money whatsoever. Sharing billboards makes a lot of sense. Find other companies that are smaller companies that would like to share a billboard with you, cut your cost by 75%, get your message out there and get rolling. Sometimes that's a good thing to do. I took a picture of this billboard over at Pink Hill, I think in Green County, and uh, different folks that are doing a good job. Usually you, you don't want to put competitors up there together, but you mix it up and it can be a very effective, low-cost way to get a good big message out to help jumpstart your business. There's about 20 different methods to use, but I'm going to talk methods of how to use these different medias. First of all, let's talk, I don't give you 12, there's more in your handout. But list your profit centers and then go right straight to your target group of customers and decide which ones will work best with them. Create your Raven fan customers uh, in, uh, list in your database so that you can use those. Get in the habit of introducing yourself and your products uh, in person, uh, in, in, in your emails, uh, and in videos. Make sure your website is up and running. Use postal, uh, uh, social media ads. And now put some testimonials into play. Find customers that will give you good testimonials and put them into play. That is the most effective way to help internet shoppers get rid of uh, anxiety about doing business with you. Remember what we've talked about with SEO terms. That's a super tool. Uh, 
keep up your continuous customer uh, visits uh, when you can. Uh, use referrals all that you can. Think about branding and private labels uh, uh, to, to promote your products. Use that Google locator amount that will come free to you uh, on your business at Google account. On my website, see right here, see, the, see the, uh, the map that shows people where we are. Now, this is not my home office in Dunn. I have a map going to where we actually ship products from in Wilson so that customers uh, won't think that they'll be coming to Dunn to, to pick up their equipment. Or they don't, they go to a warehouse in Wilson. So you have some flexibility in that. Uh, and figure out different ways to use your mapping. Guerrilla marketing is indeed uh, what you do above and beyond. <laughs> in your handout, we have 20 uh, uh, marketing tactics that you'll use. But I'll talk about seven now. Use your DBAs. Use your Facebook. Use your security um, comfort methods with testimonials and photos and hospitality, lots of that. And uh, uh, look at your handout for a lot more. DBA is the best example of using those is a, is a catalog. Uh, you can go at the grocery store. Catalog is one company, but they got 72, I think it is, different DBAs that they do business. <clears throat> this is where I say to you, people will say, Steve, does that don't run up my uh, bookkeeping costs and accounting costs, the more DBAs that I use? No, no, you're still just going to be one company. But you're going to use DBAs to name your products. They name the same products different names because customers call them different names. And you're going to use those different names and name your web pages accordingly, such as that. So take time to look at the handout as we go. I'm running out of time here. Use Facebook. Use eBay to, to promote your products. Use the SEO terms as we've talked about. Be a five-star organization. Make sure people are using the testimonials. Develop a plan for each customer. Come up with a, a media and a method that you can get to them. I'd appreciate it if you'd write them down and send me copies of that. I've made comments on it. Those of you that are sending the information, I really appreciate it. So as we're running out of time, let me say to you, our goal is to help customers find us. Help customers find us. And we do that the best ways that we can. And I'm giving you some good list here. Put it to work. It'll make money for you. Uh, let's keep in mind our, in, our, in our prayers, all of our friends and classmates over in the mountains down in Florida, they got, they're having a tough time. And if you are in a position to help some way, send some aid that way, please do that. Uh, next week, I'm going to try to have some type of concrete thing that maybe we can do as the Academy of Entrepreneurs and, and Associates. But at least it don't cost us a penny to pray and, and, and have some private moments for them. Let's make some money this week, okay? Let's get these businesses up and running. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to kick off my holiday advertising campaign this week. I procrastinated for four weeks, but I'm going to skip the fall and I'm going to go right straight to the winter. So thank you all very much. I appreciate your comments, and I look forward to, to uh, helping you any way that I can. Thanks for attending tonight. God bless you. Any comments? Tasha, how are you doing? <laughs> I see you, no doubt. It's good to have you on board. <laughs> Looks like you're laid back. I, I, want, <laughs> um, I have a question about DBA. All right. Um, for like it's so like so, for me, I'm doing a community center, but we also have food trucks, and we have like liquor trucks. Would it be best to do DBAs under those because they're all housed under one organization? Whatever you're dealing with, there are appropriate DBAs that will help you help help other people identify with them uh, through different labels or or, or uh, branding processes that you can use. So yes, yeah, DBA is always a positive method for, for, for getting the message to different customer groups, different people. 
Is that something yep. that the SB Small Business Small Center can help me help. do or help me understand better? I'm sure they could. And if you read the information that I've sent to you in the study guides, that will help you as well. If you okay. give me some examples of the different things that you're selling or marketing, I'll be glad to give you some ideas about that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Steve. I had a couple little questions. Go ahead. Um, uh, I'm getting I'm, a lot of my stuff together. I've worked on Instagram, my Instagram account, my Facebook account for my business. Um, I was wondering, um, my, my husband already has a business, and would it and be affected to do a DBA based on that? Or because I, think, I still think I'm going to do some um, self proprietorship. Are you thinking about doing your business under your husband's business name? Yes, I, to help Is with that, some of the red tape. Red. Absolutely. Your husband can add a legal DBA to his business, and you'll be right in the groove. Now, if now, we're doing different products that don't, don't sound that they go together, should we do, should I have like two entities? Because one is based on laser craft woodwork, and the other is based on um, textiles, printing textiles and so forth. Or is there a way you think I can bring that all together? I would, I would think that... I would think that you would want a DBA, uh, that you might want a DBA for each one of the different ones, and then just use them in ways that that help promote it the best way. So let's 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 get a definite understanding here of one thing first. DBAs. Our conversation is two different subjects. One is the first subject you mentioned about how to name your business. To to how to name your business to save bookkeeping money and accounting money and naming your business several different uh, aliases but still operating under one set of books as you and your husband could do. Now, that's the first part. The second part is not company recognition. It's product and services recognition. And just as importantly there, we can name our products and services different names or different DBAs so that different customers can find us easier as they search for terms. Okay. So you're, so you're discussing DBAs specifically as just making sure people can find the products they're looking for, like the search words, search key terms, and so forth. I'm discussing both, both of the important advantages of using DBAs. One is your corporate naming, your company naming, and the other is your product naming. And, and there's two different purposes that you would use different DBAs. One, to keep your bookkeeping expense down and to operate, serve different types of customers under the same umbrella by using DBAs. And the other is to really bring in more customers because of how you're naming your products and your services. Now, if, if my husband wanted to change the name of the business as far as making it encompassing to all of this, he's a photographer and has a, a business, but yet I, we're looking at taking the photography into another product, not just portrait, but um, laser engraved images, um, wood, black, black, um, uh, mess, like, like, so, so that's, that's, that's great. great. Together, yeah. it brings both, both you know, you know, artistic side and the technical side together. But I, I'm really not sure if that idea is. Does it sound like it would make sense? It makes sense, but it's one of those things that sounds like a good idea at the time and may not stand the, the test of time. So it's really good to think about it and 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 see. So you might you you might want to write down the different DBAs that you would consider. Okay. And let's put it down and, and, and um, marinate on it a little while. Okay. I, I don't want I don't want you merging your businesses to be the end of your marriage. Oh, oh well, I already <laughs> do most of it anyway. He just takes <laughs> pictures. <laughs> but, but 
I, I, uh, so it, it's important that you don't rush into it. That you, yeah. that you let's come up with a good plan, and I'll be glad to, to discuss it with you and give you some advice as some other people would too. I'm going to be bring, sending some stuff to you this week. I've got a lot of things done. I just haven't sent it to you. Statement, vision, um, purpose, all those things I've done. I just haven't sent them to you. Well, good for you. And, and so, so. Way to go. Well, thank you, Cindy. All right. I'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. Any other comments? Brooke, you want to say hello? Hi, how are you? There you are. How are you? I'm good. I'm so sorry, my house is a little bit noisy, so um Yeah, things going all right. Um so I heard that your family house got washed away. I didn't understand. Can you, you heard what? Hello, hello. I'm, I'm not hearing you, honey. Okay, well, drop me a message in. Our communication is not working. All right, y'all take care. Good night to you. God bless you and look forward to getting information from you. Remember, next week we're going to be talking about making money, hanging on to it, and cash flow in, and such as that. Take care.